pleased as always to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Today we've got a week six matchup for you here between the Miami Dolphins and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Two teams on opposite ends of the Sunshine State. The Jags and Dolphins are underway. Here comes Jalen Waddle from his end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Former Washington Husky, here's Miles Gaskin. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. On the handoff, it's Gaskin. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Test two plays in. This is third and two. Now the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it, it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. So still a scoreless game in the first, but they're going to go for this thing on their own side of the field on fourth down. They'll try and run for it, and I'm not sure he got there. Did they stop him? They did. A surprising move here on the opening drive of the game, and the Jags take over in terrific field position. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. First carry for the Clemson man, Travis Etienne. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Javon Holland and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. 
And this Charles definitely not what they were wanting to see. Remember, he threw three interceptions in the loss last week, and now he gives the ball away again here in the very first quarter. And you have to think that this was drilled into him all week, too, by his teammates, by his coaching staff. They've told him all week long, we've got to protect the football. They probably crossed that fine line with giving him the right advice and saying it too much, and it turned out that it got into his head a little bit. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. Oh, not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. A play fake for Gaskin. Now Tua. Got a man. It's the rookie Jalen Water. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. Now a first down carry by Bell. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he'll get this way down into Jacksonville territory. 49 yards rushing for him now in his first two carries in the ball game. And you hear it all the time, but that's one of the dangers of the blitz. You get past that first wave, nobody else is there. And when teams blitz, what they're trying to do is make you lose your poise, lose your timing and your tempo. But when you hold it together, you can really hurt them the other way, getting past that first wave. Two and now on first down. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Three yards the gain there, second down. They'll go option to the short side. The and they'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. To a ton of Iloa. With touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Dolphins are going to take a first quarter lead. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And that makes it 7 nothing Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And they have the game here followed by the open date on their calendar next weekend. And Charles, this is a crew that you have to think really is relishing the opportunity to be on the couch for a few days. Yeah, they certainly are. But let's face it, partner. They can't get caught looking ahead to that couch time while they're playing this one. They've got to take care of business first. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Now Lawrence to throw. Steps away to his left. 
Great vision there by Lawrence as he scrambles for a first down. As a rookie quarterback, that's exactly how you endear yourself to your teammates. Give it up for the cause. It's also how you end up on the training table, too. Yeah, it's a catch-22. Coach doesn't like it. Teammates love it. Where do you fall on it? Well, I fall on wanting to endear yourself to your teammates, but pick your spots. Be smart about it. They need you for the full season. Yeah, the rookie's going to learn as he goes. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Lawrence. Right side, it's Manhurts, the tight end. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. So for Trevor Lawrence, uh, listen, the hype, the buzz, whatever you want to call it, it just surrounds this guy. One of the most highly regarded draft picks of the last decade or two. What do you think defenses are going to throw at him here in his rookie season? Well, I think all the edge rushers can't wait to get a shot at him, especially his rookie year, because they want to see if he can handle the pressure when they come at him. But I think defensive coordinators, they know that he's well-schooled and he's very intelligent. They want that pressure on him. They'll throw those normal blitzes. But they also want to throw combo coverages in the secondary to see if he can read them. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 41. Now Lawrence. That's caught. It's Dan Arnold, the tight end. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there. And they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. On first and ten, it's Lawrence. Finds the open target, Arnold. Touchdown, Jaguars! Dan Arnold, his first touchdown of the year. And the Jaguars are within an extra point of tying this one up. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total, but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. 66 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. 
Partner, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Now Tua. Eluding the pressure right. Over the middle complete. It's Parker. Fighting through it. He's got space. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. It's another first down as they bite off 23 more on that one. And we all remember when Devontae Parker was drafted, a first-round pick out of Louisville. Really hit his stride in 2019 with 1,200 yards. Numbers dipped a bit last year, but he can be a real dependable target for Tua Tungavailoa. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Well, let's face it, that's just a helpless feeling for a running back there. He's looking up to find a hole, and all he finds is a whole lot of ticked-off linebacker. Behind the chain, second and 12. Tua sets up to pass it. Over the middle and complete to Waddle. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. On third and short, they'll try option left. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. That one will go for nine yards and a first down on the keeper. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Trying to improvise. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. Now on second down, this is Gurley. Five yards, now it's third and five. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up at seven. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Throwing now is Chungamailoa. A screen to Bell. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Flores learned under the master. He's going to go on fourth down. They're running with Gurley, and he won't get there. They stop him a few yards short of the line to gain. Todd Gurley unable to get it past the line. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here on the turnover on downs. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for rink of pressure. Gets to him and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Emmanuel Agba that time able to drop him for a loss. I think most quarterbacks would love 
to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. They can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. On second down, a run with ETN. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they're going to drop him well shy of the first as he can only make it to the 11. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Back deep for Miami, Jalen Waddle. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. Returnable here from the 38. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. That'll be a 47-yard punt, officially five on the return. And it'll be Dolphin football. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And with great starting field position, one timeout in their pocket, they could still come away with points here in the late going. He's going to go for a big play downfield. It's caught inside the 25. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A very nice pickup of 30 foot pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33 yard line. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. So second and long and gotta be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Another try after the first down sack. Tua. Open receiver here. Complete. It's Parker. And he doesn't quite make it. Taking it within an eyelash. Dropped it to one. Give him 32 on the play. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 seven, seven our score. As it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida and check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Coach. Thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. As they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Lawrence now off the bootleg. And that is intercepted. Or was it? Wait, they'll say no. No interception. He did not keep the feet in bounds, apparently. So that's just going to be an incompletion. They 
come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Play action. It's Lawrence. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Arnold. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And he's got Rome. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 43 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 38. And they'll run here with ETN. And he'll go down at the 28. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've kind of hit the jackpot there. And they'll run it. This is James Robinson. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. The game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. First and ten, it's ETN. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Second and six. And now they'll throw it with Lawrence. Sliding out of the pocket. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. They'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. They'll run with ETN. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through and picking up first downs. They'll try and run. This is Robinson. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. This defense against the run, by the way, they're not top five, but they are top ten. So what's your philosophy here? Do you try and run the ball against a team that's pretty good against the run? What if you're a pretty good running team? If so, you might want to go ahead and run it anyway because that's your strength. On second and goal, Lawrence rolling to his right, to the sideline, and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. And they try to get him into space, coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work out a little bit more. They'll try to run with ETN. No gain on the play that time. So a big stop, and it's going to leave them with a fourth and goal. 
Offensively, not what they wanted there, but hey, you can kick the field goal here and take the lead. Felt like a little bit of a statement stop, didn't it? You know, made a big play right there. Okay, guess what? Ball's in your court, guys. What are you going to do? Myself, I kick the field goal, get the three, and take the lead. Now they don't get a touchdown here on the opening drive of the third quarter, but I think maybe you still say mission accomplished as they come away with the lead. No, absolutely. You keep the pressure on, right? You go downfield, get some points up on the board, and hope that you've motivated your defense to take the field and hold that lead. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Jags grab it. And he brings this one back. A fumble return for Jacksonville score. And that's got to be so disappointing for a defense. You, know, you force the fumble, think you got a chance at a turnover, and instead, not only do you give up the football, you also give up a touchdown as well. Yeah, you just think to yourself, you've done all the hard work, right? You forced the fumble, but when they didn't come up with it, I think they relaxed a little bit or maybe lost their focus as well, and it ended up turning out to be a touchdown against them. And they will not get a chance to return this one. It's through the back of the end zone for a touchback. Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. They trail by 10, 17-7 as they come up on a first and 10. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Well, sometimes it's hard to take your eyes off this guy at the linebacker position. He can really cover some ground, and he did there to make that play. Yeah, this defense as a whole has really been flying to the football all game long. They have not allowed too much of anything, and here's another example. A great play there to get in and disrupt it before it could get going. On second and 11 now, Tua. And his throw is incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Bailoa. And over the middle, this is Parker. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Welcome back now here in London. It's Dolphin football, but they trail here as we get set for the fourth. On first down, it's Gurley. Bust through the tackle. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. From the 45 on second down, Tua. And that was going to be off target and incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read. And by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. The Dolphins on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and six. Looking to pass to him. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. Gurley's got the first down of Insum. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. Two are going to throw. It's complete to Parker left side. 
And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. The end result, 21 yards. Rolling to his left. That is caught by Waddle. Touchdown, Miami. Jalen Waddle, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Dolphins have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Sanders on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it and again get those first downs keep possession of the football after the pickup of five here's second and five here's Lawrence to throw flushed out right and he can't find a receiver and he's brought down you know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. And that negates a pretty decent punt return. And the goal is to gain a first down on a punt return, which is 10 yards. This was much more than that, but it is going to come back due to the illegal block in the back. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and 10. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. That's going to be caught by Waddle. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. And again, go thank the guys on D. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Trying to erase that deficit all at once. One big shot. He took it. Unfortunately for him, incomplete. This a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. Here's Gurley now out of the gun. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain.
One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Tua on fourth down. And throw right side complete to Parker. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. They've been burned twice already on fourth down, but the third time's the charm as they keep the drive moving. Now a handoff for Gurley. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down the wire. On second down, it's Gurley again. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. look for some important yardage on third down. From here, it would be a 60-yard boot. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They'll break the huddle here and go for it. This is fourth down. Here's Tua. He's letting this one go for Fuller. There's Fuller for a Dolphin touchdown. Will Fuller, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Dolphins are going to jump back in front. Might be seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team, and then following through all the way through. Go ahead and throw one more up there. Why not? Been a great game, and we are not done yet. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that will make this a four-point game. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. And the ball on the 30. Here's second and four. He'll look to throw. Complete to Chenault. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. A six-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays. Picks up the first. First and 10 at the 36-yard line. 60 Pittsburgh. One, one, two. They'll look to throw. They're connecting here with DJ Shark. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. Call that a very strong gain of 24. 
And I believe the referee's been buzzed. Yeah, they want to take another look at this call, and it's certainly a big one here late in a tight game. So the folks in New York just going to wind up confirming what the official saw as this play will stand as is. Back to throw. He'll get this out to the flat for ETN. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Four yards remain for second down. Back to throw. Flush to his right. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. He's back to throw. Finds the open target, Arnold. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. Escaping the pressure right. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Opted to run for it, the decision a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. And he's got it! It's caught for a touchdown! And they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. So for those of little... And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed. And in a tight game like this, they're going to take a good, long look at it. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Point after by Lambeau, up and good. And it would appear, barring some late heroics, they're going to get out of here with a cup from behind victory. And Lambeau now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. So you're right there, but obviously the clock is not your friend. How do you handle this situation? You're thinking two plays. One, to get yourself in position for the second one. Whether you're able to get into field goal range or you have to try another deep pass, another Hail Mary. But you're trying to get the first one to a receiver, get out of bounds, and give yourself a chance to set things up for an easier shot at it. Let's see if they can do it. Might be easier said than done. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. And now with six seconds remaining, they're going to burn their final timeout. Six seconds remaining, we get a timeout on the field.
One final try for Tonga Bailoa. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off,